Hey everyone, welcome to another video. We are almost through my retro review series for the Indiana Jones movies in the lead up to the Dial of Destiny. I'm now up to The Last Crusade, which was the last one that I had never seen before. Before this endeavor, the only indie movie that I had seen previously was The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And now let's talk about The Last Crusade. Once again, this review will contain full spoilers for The Last Crusade, so you have been warned, and let's get into it. Father, in the belly of that steel beast. Dad, Junior! Okay, get ready to click off this video and dislike this, because I think... Out of the whole trilogy in the 80s with the Indiana Jones movies, this may have been the weakest in my eyes. Temple of Doom, as you may know, was my favorite. I know another extremely hot take, but I don't care. I love that movie. And Raiders of the Lost Ark was quite good. And while The Last Crusade has true moments of greatness, which I'll definitely go into, this just failed to pique my interest like the other ones did, unfortunately. I think the biggest thing that turned me off this was that this was Spielberg's attempt almost at an apology for the violence that Temple of Doom had. This to me goes too far in the opposite direction and to me felt like a modern day Disney movie in a lot of ways with how certain tropes kind of play out. But going back to being positive now, I think this has the best opening out of the entire trilogy. The backstory of Indy with River Phoenix playing a younger version of the character while watching another man in a hat and coat who looks very similar to Indy was quite cool. The whole opening sequence is action packed and once again has that focus on action and adventure which was the reason why I love Temple of Doom so much. It then transitions later from River Phoenix's face to Harrison Ford's which was just a wonderful example of excellent editing. This whole sequence reminded me in a lot of ways of Uncharted 3 and 4, which are phenomenal games, and to see those cinematic aspects play out on screen here was just really cool. I also think that this is perhaps the funniest film in the entire franchise. Every single joke lands, and it keeps it going at a nice light and breezy pace. I think the addition of Sean Connery as Indy's dad was an excellent creative choice, which further explores the character of Indy and adds a lot of layers to him. You also have to add that they are just electric together, and of all of the great things that I'll remember from this film, the many scenes with those two characters will be the top thing that comes to mind. I have a bit of interesting trivia for you as well. As you know, I like to add that for these kinds of reviews. The scene in the blimp where they are both sitting down and talking, apparently it was incredibly hot that day on set when they were shooting and they actually had their pants off during that entire scene. I mean, on a rewatch, that adds a lot to the comedy aspect of this film as well. Once again, this film is incredibly practical. There are rats in this, and they were actually bred for this movie. I don't know how Harrison Ford and Alison Doody managed to wade through all of these rats, because I know I would have struggled immensely. Fuck that. The sequence was disgusting in all the right ways, and once again, this probably would have been done all digitally if it were made today. Of course, all the action scenes were brilliantly shot and are incredibly practical. These films, to me, might have been the standard for stunt work because each of them just blow your mind as to how they were all filmed. The treasure itself being the Holy Grail might be the best treasure that Indy could go for, and I liked what the characters had to do to get it. The tests were all interesting, and it further bonds the father and son duo that the film wants to focus on. This may be one of Spielberg's most personal films, which was something I picked up on because I saw the Fablemans, and the relationship dynamics with the father and son duo the way it's shot and the ending of this film especially all reminded me of certain scenes in The Fablemans, which once again enhances the quality of this film. Now, I say all of this great stuff because I don't think that this is a bad movie by any means. I understand why it's a classic and why it's loved by so many people, probably you as well. I think the predominant reason why it just doesn't work for me personally is... It doesn't feel like it puts Indy into too many situations where I thought he was going to lose. And because of that, I didn't feel any tension in the scenes 
that was supposed to make you feel that way. Not to say there aren't crazy moments because there are. What I'm more alluding to here is that scene near the end of the movie where you think he dies and then suddenly, no, he was fine the entire time. I have never really liked that trope in movies. I actually kind of hate it, to be honest. If you're going to kill off a character, do it or don't do it. I hate that kind of middle ground. It just feels artificial to get a shock out of you. I know the scene made the father-son bond stronger because Indy's dad realizes all the things he should have done, which was nice, but there could have been so many other ways to illustrate that. Like the tension they go through to get the Holy Grail when doing those three tests. That's a perfect example right there. I think though what this all boils down to, because there's no real plot holes or messy storytelling or anything like that, it is a well-told film. It's shot well. As I mentioned, it's technically brilliant, but it just doesn't click with me. Temple of Doom and Raiders were just a little more consistent to me with their pacing, which lent for a more enjoyable experience. This is kind of stuck in between having really long and elaborate action set pieces with long moments of just kind of figuring stuff out. And because those action sequences were so crazy and fun, it made the dialogue heavy moments less interesting to me and frankly boring, especially if the scene did not involve Sean Connery and Harrison Ford. Overall, I mean, I don't have too many specific criticisms for The Last Crusade, apart from what I mentioned earlier. It just didn't really work for me, and you know, that happens sometimes. Raiders of the Lost Ark mostly worked for me, and Temple of Doom I thought was incredibly enjoyable. For me, The Last Crusade is a tad weaker than both those films, but it has a lot of greatness to it, and it's honestly a 3 out of 5 for me. And honestly, that's it. It just didn't click with me. That doesn't mean that it won't work for you. It has worked for plenty of other people. A lot of people think this is the best in the franchise. And I can see why. It has a lot of those excellent, fun moments to it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comments below what you think of The Last Crusade and the indie franchise as a whole. I'll be continuing this series with a review for The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I don't know when that review will be coming because I'll be talking about Ted Lasso Season 3 and the new Spider-Verse movie very soon. You're not going to want to miss it, so make sure you are notified for when that is coming by hitting that subscribe button and turning notifications on, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.